In this video, I want to give a quick introduction to PHP and what we use it for. So PHP is a scripting language, and it's often found on web servers. So we need to have a web server running on our computer to actually use PHP. And you can see right here, I'm just running on localhost, just so that my PHP will get compiled. So I'm going to go to my text editor here, and you can see I have just a standard HTML file, nothing special about it in any way, and I want to turn it into a PHP file. So I want it to become a PHP file. So all I need to do is just rename it to index.php instead of HTML. So I'm going to rename it here, index.php. Now when I go back to my browser, you'll notice everything looks exactly the same, and that's a good thing. What's actually happening here is the web server is taking that PHP file and it's compiling it into actual HTML. Now that may be a little bit odd right now because there is only HTML in our PHP file, but let's just look at another example here. Let me write out today's date at the bottom here. So if I want to put some PHP code inside of my HTML file, I can do that by just creating a PHP block. So the PHP block is another tag, and the start tag looks like this, so it's less than question mark PHP, and when you're done writing your PHP code, you close it with question mark greater than. So within here, all of our code, our PHP code, goes within this open and close tags. So let's say, to start out, I just want to write out my name. So I'm going to write echo Thomas. Now just like CSS, our PHP has to have semicolons at the end of the lines. And this function right here, echo, will actually just write something out to the page. So you can see here I have my PHP block, then I have a comment, and then I have this echo function, and I'm just passing it the word Thomas. Now, if I go back to my browser, you'll see that the word Thomas is here, which makes sense because we're writing it out to the page. But I want to show you, if I go to view source, and if you look right here, you can see that all that PHP code is gone. If we go back and look in our text editor again, you can see that the PHP code that we had written has disappeared. And the only thing that's left is the information that we echoed out. So let's look at another example here. I'll echo Bradley. All right, so I did that. I go back and refresh, and now you can see right here, look, the only stuff that's left is the words Thomas and Bradley. Another thing you'll notice is that there's no space between those words. The reason is there's no space is because I haven't actually generated a space in PHP. So if I want a space between those, I'll write echo, and then in quotes, I'll put a space like this. Now when I go refresh, you can see there's a space between the word Thomas and the word Bradley. So I can do other things. Let's say I can even echo out HTML. So let's use the strong tag here. Dinosaurs rock. So I've echoed out a strong tag from PHP. Now if I go back and look in the browser, you'll see, did I not save it? Nope, there we go. So you can see right here, here is the strong tag that I wrote out. If I go and look in view source, you can see here's the strong tag. So again, the PHP code is disappearing, and the only stuff that's left is the HTML that we create. So let's look at another example using a strong tag. Uh, let's put a strong tag here. And then inside the strong tag, let's create a new PHP block like this. So I created a new PHP block. Then inside there, I'll echo something else out. Hello. All right. Now if I go back to my browser, you can see there's the word hello. If I go look here, you can see look. So now the word hello is inside the strong tag, which makes sense because the PHP bits here have disappeared, 
and the only thing that's remaining is the word hello, which is what we wrote out to the screen. So the web server is reading our PHP code. Whatever PHP code, the whatever the PHP code writes out to the page is what's left over, and all that PHP code just disappears. So the web server is compiling our PHP into an HTML file for us. And the way that it knows that this is a PHP file is just because we have given it the PHP extension. So let's look at another quick example here of PHP. I'll create a paragraph tag, and I want to write out today's date and time. So I'm going to put a PHP block in here, and I'm going to echo date. So date is a function to write out today's date. So let's go look in the browser. Oh, so we have an error. So date actually expects us to format the date. So if I want to write out to the, the year, I can put a capital Y in there. So there we go, there's the year. Let's do a month. So I'll do dash M, dash day. So that will be year, month, day. All right, Oops, if you save, there we go. So the year, month, day. And we can do lots of other cool things. So the website you need to remember for PHP is php.net, which is PHP's documentation. So if I want to find out more information about the date function, I, over here I'm just going to search for date, and it'll bring me to the date function, and here's all the letters that you can use to actually write out different information. So let's write out the time. So that would be a, a lowercase h, and then the seconds are a, or the minutes, sorry, are lowercase i, and the seconds are lowercase s. So let's go in here, we'll do h colon i colon s, so that will give us the hour, the minute, and the second. And if we go back here, oh, there we go, you can see there's our time. I'll just refresh it. Every t As I refresh, you can see that the time is constantly changing. Because every time we refresh, we're recompiling that PHP file. Now, if I go look at the source here, you can see right here that, again, the PHP code is gone. The only thing that remains is what we have echoed out to the page. So in this case, we're echoing out the current date. 